Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to my video channel. Today what I would like to do is a video product review for the new Nikon D7000 Digital SLR. And if you've come to one of my seminars over the years, or you've watched my video channel, or you've uh, ordered my Mastering Dental Photography, Digital Dental Photography DVD set, um, you probably are aware that I'm really into clinical photography. I also like recreational photography, but I really love my clinical dental photography. And I find that it's a really valuable tool for patient communication, lab communication, and just for uh, education, my own personal education, looking at my cases and becoming better over time, over the last even 15, 16 years since I've been doing a lot of clinical photography. And I like cameras. <laughs> and and um, if you've been to some of my last few seminars, I've probably mentioned that I've been using a D3, a Nikon D3 camera, which is a pro camera, and then I switched to uh, include the Nikon D3S, which is another pro Nikon camera. And they're great cameras. They really are a fantastic set of cameras that I use for my clinical photography. The only problem with them is they're very heavy and they're quite expensive. So, you know, between the size and the, sheer, the sheer mass of these cameras and the weight of these cameras and the price of these cameras, I thought it would be good to have another alternative to share with all of you today. So I want to talk about this D7000. And my wife was due to get a new camera in the winter and I went looking around and I, I really thought after looking at all the features of the D7000 it would be a fantastic camera to buy my wife for her birthday. So, you know, let me tell you about the features for this camera, this new camera. One great feature is that it's not huge. You know, compared to the D3S uh, and the D3, it's a lot smaller, a lot more compact, and a lot lighter to carry around, especially if you're on vacation. And I guess for the dental office too, you know, if you don't like a big bulky camera to take your clinical photography, this is probably a better camera for you than the D3S. Um, a few other features that I found really interesting when I was researching cameras back in February this camera has very fast powering up so it, fa it powers on really quickly which is something you want just to be able to click and or grab your camera and take a shot really fast especially recreational shots uh, but even in the clinical setting you want to have your cameras on and ready to go really quickly uh, the other thing that I really like about this camera it has is that it has a 16.2 megapixel CMOS sensor and that's almost at a pro level uh, amount of megapixels. It's excellent uh, resolution for our clinical photography. Uh, the other a couple of things that it has that are really great, well it does ISO up to 6400 which isn't really relevant for uh, clinical photography but really good for uh, photography if you go on vacation and you want to get some uh, low light uh, images. Um, the other thing that I really like is it has SD card slots and so you can have two SD cards in this camera and I like these little SD cards. My uh, D3 and D3S use the much bigger cards uh, and they're a little more inconvenient I would say because if you look at my MacBook Air or my iMac I have a slot built into those computers that I can just put this card in this little SD card which just makes it easier to upload your images or your videos and uh, faster I believe as well a um, few other things about this camera it has a magnesium alloy body which is similar to the pro level cameras like the D3 and the D3S so this will be very uh, 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 absorption resistant and weather resistant because of the body. Um, and then a few other things, it has a beautiful 3 inch high res LCD monitor and I'll show you the monitor in a minute because I'm going to uh, walk you through a couple of the s settings that I would suggest when you're going to use this for clinical photography instead of personal photography. And then the other neat thing that this camera has that you may or may not want in your dental office but will be great if you go on vacation is that this does 1080p video at 24 frames per second. And it has, which is excellent, full-time autofocus. 
So for me, I, I just find the video on this excellent and fairly easy to do compared to the D3S, which does video but doesn't have full-time autofocus, so it's harder to keep it in, in focus. And it has stereo audio, although if you're going to do video a lot on a digital SLR, you'll want to buy a, a, uh, a microphone that will go on top of the uh, shoe adapter. So those are kind of the features that I found intriguing when I was looking at buying my uh, wife a new camera for her birthday. And one of the reasons I wanted to buy her a new camera was, first of all, she really does enjoy f photography as well. And what I found was last year when we went on vacation, I brought my D3S and it's just so heavy to carry on a vacation. Um, with all of the other things you have to bring when you have a four and a six year old. So I thought, you know, we'll, I'll buy uh, Melissa this D3, uh, D7000 and then we could take this instead of my D3S on vacation with us. And I'll tell you, it's been a wonderful camera to take with us on vacation. And I, what I would like to do at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a couple of clinical photos and I'll show you a couple of photos that we've taken on a couple of trips that uh, we've had since the camera was was uh, purchased back in February. And now what I want to do is I'm going to go up to the video um, camera and I'm going to show you a couple of settings that I would recommend you consider if you're going to be doing clinical photography. Okay, so if you look here, this camera has the shooting menu at the back and what I want to show you is just a couple of settings that I would recommend. Uh, the one setting that I think you should consider is always keep yourself at a large image quality. That way you can um, basically print out your pictures and they'll turn out really great even if you want to print them large. The next thing I would consider or recommend is that you set your white balance to flash because we're doing flash photography for clinical photography so you don't want to set it for auto you'll have a white balance that's not quite as good as if you set it for flash and then picture control if you're doing clinical photography I would set it to neutral I find standard is a little too much uh, saturation of colors so I prefer s uh, neutral for uh, setting my uh, fo camera for clinical photography. The pictures that I show you from our vacation, a couple of vacation photos, are actually set uh, with a picture control of standard. But if you really want to punch your pictures, you can set it for uh, vivid. Vivid looks really good, but not for clinical photography. I don't think that's a good idea. And color space, the last thing that I want to show you is color space, I would set it Adobe RGB. Just gives you a better color space. If you look here at the uh, card slot, again, two slots for these SD cards. And personally, I love these SD cards when I'm uh, doing uh, importing. They're just much more convenient. So if you look at the actual camera, I've set this up with the exact same setup that I would use for my Nikon D3 or D3S in my practice. And we have the Nikon 105 macro lens with vibration reduction. We have the uh, PhotoMed bracket, which holds my independent flash heads. And we have the Nikon R1C1 uh, flash, flash kit, macro flash kit. And this kit allows me with these brackets to change my angles of the flash heads. And that can give you highlights in different locations and give you uh, really nice and pleasing uh, uh, final photos, especially at the one-to-one -one images and the really close-up images that I take with the black background. You can see the line angles and some of the surface texture. It looks really great. So that's um, basically the way we set this up. I also would like to point out that I shoot in aperture priority mode. And I usually use a little exposure compensation, typically around exposure compensation one. And if you look at these images now, the image on the left was shot with my D3S, and the image on the right was shot with the D7000. And really, both images are quite clinically acceptable. And as I said at the beginning of this video, if you don't want a really bulky camera, and you don't want to spend, you know, five to six thousand dollars on your camera body. D7000, I think, is an excellent alternative to going out and buying a D3 or a D3S or whatever the next total pro level camera Nikon comes out with. 
and just to throw in a couple of extra photos to share with you at the end of this video. Um, I was fortunate enough to, go, to be invited to go to the Masters this year and I'm a big golf fan. I love watching golf on TV but I always wanted to go see what Augusta National looked like. So when I was contemplating going to the Masters and what to bring equipment wise because I was going to be able to go on the Tuesday and Wednesday as well as the Thursday and on Tuesday and Wednesday it's the practice rounds in the prior three tournament so I thought it would be uh, great to bring my camera obviously and then when I was thinking about it I thought well to walk around two days maybe eight to ten hours might be a little much to bring the D3S I was very close to bringing the D3S but I thought you know we had to actually uh, pack pretty uh, can pretty um, a pretty small amount of luggage for uh, the transportation that we were provided. So I decided to uh, go with the D7000. And the picture quality is amazing. I set it to standard, and for a couple of the images I set to vivid, just to allow the golf course to kind of punch. And my favorite picture that I took at Augusta National was uh, actually a picture of Rory McIlroy, who I said at the beginning of Wednesday afternoon after we watched him practice, would win the Masters. And I was right that he would win a major this year, but wrong on the tournament. But I looked good until about the 10th hole on Sunday. So anyway, my favorite picture is a picture of Rory McIlroy practicing on the 18th green in the bunker with Tom Watson and Tom Watson was showing young Rory where to land his ball for different pin positions and showing him a couple of different nuances of Augusta National and it was just neat to see you know you see a 62 year old veteran of golf and legend of golf showing a 22 year old how to uh, pull off a couple of different shots and it, it was fantastic. I really enjoyed my time at the Masters. And then the last few pictures that I want to show you are from our family vacation that we take in the summer to Turks and Caicos. And if you ever get a chance, I highly recommend going to Turks and Caicos and staying at a resort somewhere on Grace Bay because Grace Bay is a beautiful beach, especially for children. It's very shallow and very calm, the water that is in the ocean. And the, the beach is just really beautiful. And if you look at some of these pictures uh, for the end of this video, you'll see just some beautiful images of Grace Bay. And we stay at the Seven Star Resort um, I actually have a friend of a friend who's a dentist in Washington DC who I'd like to obviously thank who rents us his uh, condo there and it's a beautiful beautiful resort and as I said wonderful place to go with a family so anyway that's the end of this video if you have any comments or questions you can leave them on my YouTube channel or I'm going to be posting this video on my dental blog also and by all means go to the dental blog and leave comments uh, at the comment section on the blog at the top um, and if you're interested in more ideas about clinical dental photography you can uh, consider ordering our DVD set it's two DVDs goes through live video for me showing you all the different photos that I use clinically and how to take them. And then I show you in Aperture and Photoshop how to edit the photos so that they, you know, they can be uh, ideal for case presentation. Because, you know, it's, it's easy to have the photos just slightly rotated or slightly under exposed or overexposed. And I show you how to, a couple of basic editing tips to uh, be able to have your photos clinically really excellent for case presentation because good dental photography often leads to great case presentation to show patients what you can do for them. So anyway, uh, thank you for tuning in and I hope to see you soon.